Welcome back to Golden Acres. I'm Kim and today I'm be looking at our wood stove. So we bought this house a few months ago and we haven't cleaned it out yet. And this is, I'm gonna show you why it's so important to check everything when you get into a new house, especially things that have fire, fireplaces, wood burners, uh, cook stoves, If you look at the inside of this, that is not supposed to be full of ash. So how this works is you have the firebox here, which of course it's full with ash too, and it sucks it all the way around the heat and comes back up. So of course you'll get creosote here that you have to clean out, but this is not supposed to be full of ash. We've got a bunch of ash there. And of course, both the ash cleanouts here and back there are full. So I'm going to put on safety goggles and probably go get a N95 mask from the shop and I'm gonna clean it out. And hopefully I can do some wood burning soon. Well, we got it all cleaned out. She was full. It took us from 8. We took a break for lunch because we ate supper at 7. We ate supper at 7. We ate breakfast at 7 o'clock. Um, so we, we ate, got the kids outside. I started pulling all the ash out. Then we took a break for lunch. And we were done about 1.30 and we got the fire started in here. It was a lot of work. Do not let your ovens and your wood stoves get that bad. Ours was only that way because we didn't own it before. So this was our first time cleaning it out before we burned in it for the first time. And now I have some hot chocolate. Apple cider on and we will be doing soup for supper. So this is the hot side and it's a little bit cooler over here and this whole thing is your cooktop. We won't be cooking in the oven for a little while. We'll just use the stove top for now because the oven needs a new grate. Andrew will be making me a new one but it's going to take a couple days so it might be a week or two by the time we get back into the wood into the shop because he goes back to work this week. He had two weeks off for Christmas because of the union. And yeah, so that's the plan. I will show cooking in here versus cooking in my regular stove and the end of January probably. And then I will link below the person I watched on how to clean this out. Cause I didn't take any recording of that. We just focused on the wood stove. We got it done correctly. Sometimes filming can be distracting. So I just focused on this. I got it safe and it is safe. And later when I've learned a little bit more and I've had a little bit more practice, I will do a video on cleaning out and decreosoting the wood cook stove. Well, I've been running the stove for a couple days. It is doing great. It keeps the house, I mean the kitchen's like 80 degrees. The dining room right here behind this wall is about 73. The living room is about 71. And then the upstairs hallway, which is the only place I have a thermometer in the bedrooms, is about 67. Our traditional heat is our con conventional heat I guess technically um, is set at 65 so it's definitely keeping up and keeping the house warmer than we would have through conventional means 
I've been doing some research on this oven. I'm trying to find a rack that actually fits it and is made for it. And I found a couple websites, but they're sold out. So Andrew's definitely gonna have to make me one, so that'll be some time. But I'm also learning what to do with it. So here's the temperature read for the oven. It's currently saying about 250. It is pretty dirty and hard to see, but there's a little black line here. So there's a nice big space in here to cook in. Mm -hmm. And even with the oven damper still closed, we're still getting lots of good heat in the oven. So it shouldn't be too hard to regulate. If we want to broil, we'll open that up. But otherwise, I mean, it might take a little bit while, but you can cook at 250. If I stoke the fire a little bit more, it'll get to 350 pretty easily. It does take a little bit more forethought to prep the oven to keep those temperatures up. But it's definitely not that difficult. I have made homemade noodles on here. Uh, I didn't stoke the oven enough, so the carrots were so a little crunchy in, in our soup last night. And my husband doesn't like it. I don't really care. They're fresh carrots out of our garden, so they definitely tasted better than store-bought carrots. So we can't complain. And Andrew didn't complain that much because that makes it a really, really good heat up soup so when he heats it up for leftovers this week because i am not a fan of reheated noodles so he'll, him and the kids will eat that he is very excited because that'll make it a really nice not overly mushy soft vegetable to be put in his soup um tonight's plan i'm going to do sauteed onions and peppers and we're gonna make fajitas. I have leftover chicken and I made a cheese sauce for lunch for the kids today on this stove. I should have filmed it but getting lunch for a four, three, and one year old slightly chaotic. Two of them need a nap in that time. Um, I always keep a pot of water over here. It helps with the humidity in the house because of course wood heat is dry heat. I haven't dealt with Nosebleeds a lot. Uh, of course, I, we didn't heat with wood growing up. A kid in high school, their family used wood heat. And we were on a field trip for our FFA. So it's all FFA kids. So nobody was too freaked out by it. But he just like yelled up to the front of the bus to the teacher. And he's like, hey, my nose is going to start bleeding in the next 30 seconds. Can somebody find the Kleenexes? And so he's leaning over on blood just starts dripping into the hall, which granted he knew because he had had those before that that is something that I will remember for the rest of my life dealing with wood heat is you're going to have to supplement some humidity. So we do that with um, just a pot of water on the stove. I had to pause. It's dry over here, so I needed to get my tea. So yeah, the one thing I do make sure I do is that I use that pot of water, or at least change the pot or rinse the pot every single day because I don't want mineral buildup in my pots. So you definitely want to watch that. So the pot of water I had on here last yesterday all day was the pot I made soup in last night. This pot of water I keep replenishing and I keep making tea with. So that's definitely one thing that we're doing. Um, another thing we have is below me, which it's, I'm not gonna jump out in and out of it. We have a gate around our wood stove because we have a one-year-old. So I'm not gonna jump back and forth right now when I cook our regular ovens within our reach. So I get, you know, set everything on our regular oven and then come through the gate and then you know grab stuff off which is now a prep area the regular stove you have children they always want food right so I grab stuff off the 
stove and then bring it to the wood stove so I'm not passing things back and forth or causing myself to trip over the gate and hit the wood stove. So that's something we have done for our personal preference and safety of our children. Um, the older two, they understand that is hot, but of course a three and four year old doesn't totally understand how hurt they can get. So it's beneficial for them, but they are also, we can talk to them and rationalize with them. The one year old is still in the stage of just reaching for everything, repeating mistakes, forgetting that something was a no-no beforehand and you do a lot of distraction and um, reorienting what they're focusing on. <laughs> which you can hear her knocking things off the table right now, which sounded like an empty brother cup. Thankfully empty. So that's where I'm going to end this video. It's going to be a little bit shorter than normal, but also going to post a little bit often. So probably a long video and a short video this week. If you like what we're doing, hit the like button below. If you want to follow along with the wood stove, the garden, or other homestead projects like getting pigs and chickens in the spring, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And the best thing you can do to help us is to share us on your social media. YouTube isn't very good about getting small channels out there in the algorithm. So we need your help to get that out. Thank you. And thanks for being with us. God bless.